So hi guys, my name is Jubin Gorgi, and today I will be presenting to you a cost-effective solution to energy poverty. So you may ask yourself, what is energy poverty? Energy poverty is a lack of access to clean, renewable, and safe energy, especially electricity. Right, so um, electricity is a major resource that we use every day, whether it's in our homes, through our phones, through our toasters, even a simple light bulb, or even like a stove in your kitchen. Electricity is very important to our society. Unfortunately, many people don't have that very access to electricity. So you can, you can see a map of the global energy poverty um, throughout the world. So you can see that India has one of the biggest populations that lack eating and access to electrical grids. So there's about 836 million people just in India who don't have any access to electricity and are practically living in the darkness. Now next, Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa have one of the biggest populations that don't have any access. All right, so let me show you some quick facts about the situation currently. So 17% of the global population is not connected to the electrical grid at all. Seven out of 10 people in Sub-Saharan Africa do not have any access to lighting. So they're living practically in the darkness every day. And 30% of health facilities in Africa, as well as more than 30% of primary schools in Africa don't have any electricity to work with. So students have to work maybe with kerosene lamps, they have to work practically in the dark and have to do their homework in the dark as well. So the major reasons for this current situation that's occurring, especially in Sub-Saharan Africa and South America, is that there's a lack of financial resources. So many of these nations are undeveloped. They don't have the monetary funds to even support a extensive in infrastructure and electrical grid. Now, there are also geographical barriers. So many of these countries don't even have a location that would be suitable for any electrical grid. So let's say like a mountainous region, you're in the middle of the mountains, and the, the nation can't connect you even to the electrical grid. And lastly, there's a lack of extensive infrastructure. Without the monetary funds to support even electric grid, and without the infrastructure, you can't have any electricity. So there are several alternatives that many of these people use to just support them with the cooking and heating, maybe lighting that they even need. So in the first picture, you can see actually a kerosene lamp. So many of these individuals use very ex expensive kerosene lamps to provide the lighting that they need at, at night. Then there's also simple candles and open fires. But each of these has their own range of drawbacks. So first of all, there's increased pollution causing from like open fires. Many of these individuals have to walk like two, four, 10 to 20 miles even to get a piece of wood. And many of these pieces of wood come from forests, right? So they have to cut down forests to support this consumption. So that increases the use of black carbon, methane, CO2. These are just adding, not only affecting their society, but us through global warming as well. Then there's also deforestation, as I said, they're cutting down trees just to support those open fires. And as a result, through deforestation, there's also a lot of soil erosion. Lastly, and the most important issue is health risks. So um, some quick facts. So 50% of pneumonia uh, deaths due to um, pneumonia are actually caused by air pollutants. So many of these children under five, they're just practically dying from these air pollutants caused and created by these kerosene lamps. So while they're actually using it to do their homework, they're at the same time affecting their own health. 3.8 million premature deaths from non-communicable diseases are actually caused from contact with these air pollutants. So like when you're using open fires, especially they're using it indoors, so imagine there's so much soot in the air that they're, I mean, it's just dangerous for the lungs and for their own immune system. So this might not only affect their health in general, but also has a lasting influence on, ma on many of these countries. So let's imagine there's a guy who wants to start a business, let's say. He doesn't even have the monetary funds to support any electricity that he needs. So let's say he has some connection to electrical grid. He doesn't have even have the funds to support such an, extent, such an expensive electricity in general. And as a result, when there's no new businesses, there's no new jobs, and that just goes into a cycle of unemployment and lowers living standards as well. So this is a major issue that's impacting a lot of people, and many people have tried to find solutions to it. There's the P Power Africa Initiative from President Obama who has started funding infrastructure as well as many, such as the World Health Organization. Now, this actually inspired me to do some research this year, and I've been working for two past three months on a possible solution that might work and maybe help out people with these lighting issues. So that's actually my device that I created in the past months. You can see it right here. Um, so it's practically very similar to like a hand cart kind of system or a trolley system. It uses, you can practically use it to transport like materials where you're using like firewood, you're trying to transport maybe water or something, or personal equipment like in modern regions. At the same time, the wearable wheels of this device 
collect electricity while you're using it. So it works very similar to like a bicycle dynamo. So you're using it during the day, use it for like two hours, three hours, you can fully charge an internal battery and use it later on to provide lighting as well as electricity. So you can see here, um, the way I actually produce electricity through this project is I'm using synchronous electric motors. Now you may ask yourself, what are synchronous electric motors? So like these motors are very special motors that produce a lot of electricity, and they're actually found in microwaves. So every year, about one million microwaves are actually thrown away by individuals. And that's a big issue because it doesn't only produce trash, but also many of these electronic components are very dangerous to the environment. Now there's a synchronous electric motor in your microwave actually at home. It actually powers the turntable motor. But if you take that motor and reverse its kind of process, you can produce electricity as well with it. So let's say, imagine you're using this during the day and you're transporting materials or whatever with this. At the end of the day, when you come home after using for two hours, your battery's fully charged, and you can either charge your phone with it if you want to, if you have access to a smartphone and you have an integrated USB port in it. So if you use this for two hours, you can fully charge your iPhone, for example, with it. In addition to that, there's a 120 volt AC outlet for any like laptops or any like personal equipment that you have to charge it. And lastly, most importantly, there's a lighting access and integrated lighting system within this. So as you can see, like if you take this out, it works very similar to like a table lamp practically. So this is kind of like the device that you saw. It's just like compacted, and you're using it. You come home, use it for two hours, and you can easily turn this on. So it provides like enough lighting. Oops, sorry. <laughs> provides enough lighting to um, like light up a whole room practically. Um, so it's kind of like a way to provide you with the lighting that you need maybe at home. So. All right, so uh, one of the last components that I actually use in this device is 3D printing. So right now, we are pr getting more and more closer to using 3D printing in like, technology and making prototypes. I especially use this um, 3D printing because it facilitates and allows you to make many prototypes. It's very cheap and cost effective. Now, I use that actually for the main component of this device, and um, that's actually a picture from the yeah, lab here at school that I used to print the device as well. Now, yeah, so um, this technology, maybe this device, might not even ever get to market. It's just an idea. It might not even work, maybe, in a true environment. But just the bigger picture I was trying to convey through this presentation is that it's important that we focus on creating renewable, safe, and very effective alternatives to many of these problems that we have in society. So th through using renewable solutions, we can reduce pollution, we can create healthier environments, especially for these individuals, and lastly, we can also protect fragile ecosystems and provide the lighting that they need, especially in these areas. So as, as for our like, generation, we have a lot of new technologies and resources available. And it's important that we focus on you know, using all these technologies, using the resources that we have to create effective, renewable solutions that can solve major issues around the world and help our generation as well as the generations to come. So thank you very much for your time, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you.